Hi, it's Chris, and welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? How come you're not sitting at your table with your lab coat on? I just finished a repair, and I didn't feel like pulling all that crap out. Doesn't mean it's always going to happen, but here we go. Today on the show, we have this. This is the CyberVision 64 slash 3D from 1996 Phase 5 Digital Products. And this is a RTG card that also has a scan doubler module. Now, I don't have that, but according to Amiga Resource CX or Amiga.resource.cx, you can get this little optional board that connects via ribbon cable to this little pin header here and gives you the ability to have a flicker fixed 15 and 31 kilohertz display. It says it right here. Allow you to use one monitor for both the Amiga and CyberVision modes. Doubles your native 15 to 31. It connects to a video slot with the CyberVision. A small ribbon cable attaches the card. And you get an HD 15 adapter. So it would do it all through the Zorro bus. You wouldn't have to freaking have any goofy cables or run into the video slot. It would just do it. Now, this is also a Zorro 2 and a Zorro 3 card. The good thing about Amiga Hardware Database or Amiga.resource.cx, you guys are kicking ass. It used to be BBOAH or Big Book of Amiga Hardware that got flooded with ads and then they felt bad and rolled the ads back, but it still looks like total crap. This one, very simple to find things. Check out that page, Models, Expansions, Company, CSA, Expansions, Display Overview, Look for Your Card, Phase 5, 64 3D. And there you go. You even got the DMS files, the software, the drivers, the PDF manual. You want to see it? Boop. Click it. There's the manual from 1997. Why are you pulling this out? Why do you have this card out? Well, old Kevin down hold my file, sold one of these or something like that, and then he wanted to buy another one. It's like $400. And uh, I'm a nice guy, and I figured I'd give him a really good deal, because he'll use it. So, I don't even know if it works. So before I do anything, I'm going to pull a machine down of, I don't know what. This was on the shelf for a reason, and I don't remember what that reason was. So, this is Mr. Simon Gosk's 4000 recreation, and I got dust on it. I'm sorry. We're going to fire it up. Of course, Linux needs upgrades. It always needs upgrades. Gosh. All right, so we're going to do that. I'm going to uh, hook this up. We'll see if it works. And uh, it should work. It's brand new. It's got a brand new motherboard and everything in it. And let's uh, test this card out. Kevin is saying, fingers crossed for no smoke. Let me get this mat out of the way because I ripped it and this is, there we go. Look at that, clean table. Hoo Let's me slide things around a little better. There we go. So there is my 4000. It uh, it works. 150 megs of RAM, 68040 as required. Super Buster 9. I have the 11 right here. You know where I got it from. Anal logic. Ah. Yep. It's with my Super DMAC 04. So, we know this works. We're going to turn it off. We're going to take the nine screws out that open this pickle up. Eight screws. Top comes right off. Lay that down carefully. Now we can see inside the unit. I know it's black. You can see made by Simon Gosk. This is just the holder for my card, which is what? A 32 gigabyte compact flash. All right, here's the Amiga 4000. This is a Zorro 3 card. So it doesn't require you to use your video slot. Let's see, does this card work? My first test is of course gonna be the double mouse button and magic smoke. So we'll scoot this over here so we can all watch the explosion. Double mouse button. Does it say 8512 slash 50 or 67? 
expansion board diagnostic. There we go. Now it doesn't see it. It saw it once in Zorro 2 mood, and then it said, F you. I can be a real serious bitch if I don't get what I want. I'm not doing it. I did clean the dudes. I lost the fiberglass pen. We're going to get some alcohol. We're going to do it right. But I'll clean it really good anyway. And I'm going to fiberglass pen it while it's wet. That'll pull a lot of carbon off. Oh, yeah, look at that. Doesn't mean that that's why it's not working. It just means that it's not working now. Wouldn't work. It worked once. So, do I go down the rabbit hole, grab another machine? Let's grab a 3000. Ooh, hit me with your best shot. Oh, hashtag Amiga Life! Hashtag Amiga Life! Hashtag Amiga Life! That's what happens. You touch one thing. Me and Mr. Jonathan were talking the other day on the old messenger, and he was having some issues with some of his stuff. Which I mentioned, I'm like, all this Amiga, and we love them so much. What do we love about them? All I remember is always working on them to fix them. Like, that's all I remember. Is that, is that all you remember? I mean, yeah, you played some games. Whoopity-doo. But, like, oops. Like, most of your time was spent fixing something you tried to upgrade. And, uh, you spent your whole weekend or whatever time you used to get back to where you were before you touched it. That's why I always just say Amiga Life, because that's kind of what it is. All right, I put my screwdriver down there for when I forget. Let's light this candle. This is a regular Amiga 3000 with a Ethernet, uh, a Hydra Ethernet card in it. Does it work? I don't know. There's the hard drive light for the Zulu. This hard drive light is like, I'm not working today. Wow, your Amiga looks the same. Yeah, pretty much. Let's uh, make sure that I have my Picasso stuff on there. It's usually the same, pretty much the same stuff. I copy. SMB2 mounter. LMNO Picasso 96 installed. Great. Is Picasso installed? If so, we're going to write. Make sure the board is not attached. It is not installed. Okay, so here we go. Amiga off. Card of CyberVision. All right, it's in. Let's hit the button. No, 2121 is the Hydra. So I am not crazy. This card was put on the shelf for a reason. And that reason is it only works for a second once every couple years. I would like to volunteer to take this old bird out of her misery. It's okay. One more time, double mouse button, grab the... Alright. It should say 8512. Oh my god, now it's working. Alright, let's turn it off again. Go like this. Turn it on, see if it shows up again. Well, honk my horn. Maybe I just got it in there the right way. Let's put Picasso on it and make sure the board attaches. Because you know if this doesn't work and I sell it to Kevin and something's wrong with it, he's just going to give me a world of shit. And that's one to grow on. 2022, Icomp first install. Proceed. Proceed. No, I don't really read the book. So as you can see here, it does detect the card which is a good thing. Just let it do its thing. I'm going to say 31 kilohertz because I'm in amber. You can also choose 15 kilohertz. I don't want the printer patch, so no and yes. Proceed. All right, so I hooked up a VGA cable to this monitor, and what we're going to do is boot the Amiga. i got to fix my hard drive light, a little prick. Okay, so we have RTG enabled. We're now going to configure it. Here's how you do a quick one. Sys press find your p96 you should get a board there we go please attach the board the board's attached so i'm going to take this one and get rid of it that's my 
secondary port that I don't have. Now I'm going to tell it I want 800 by 600. I want it in true color, and I'm going to make sure this is near 60 hertz right here. So I'm adjusting this clock slider. There we go. There's an NTSC Amiga. You do 50 for your pal. Uh, you can interlace or double scan the screen. I don't do that. When I click test, this monitor should come on and I should see a signal. That's 800 by 600. So this RTG card works. Let's go even higher. 1024 by 768 and crash. Story of my life. Why didn't it work on the 4000? Because I touched the buster chip and it probably broke the whole thing. Amiga life. Amiga life, fuck. They don't like you, I don't like you. I had interlace checked off. Whoops, uncheck interlace. Make sure it's 50 hertz or 60 hertz. My monitor couldn't do that weird crap, so. Sixty hertz test. Ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. Let it auto adjust. All right, so that's that's uh that's working for the moment. So there we go. Now, Q, you better hook me the f up with something cool because this is a very expensive RTG card, and I'm giving it to you for pennies on the value. All right, so after I'm rebooting. So after setting your screen mode in Picasso. It doesn't mean your workbench is going to pop over RTG immediately. No, you got to go into Sys Prefs. Oh, look at that. Look at that hairdo. You got to go into Sys Prefs screen mode and then tell it, and then it'll flip over. I have different screen modes available. Here's the CyberVision 64, 640 by 480, 800. We did 1024 by 768, 32 bit, which is going to be freaking overkill. So we're going to set that MOF to 16.7 million colors. And we're going to hit use. Now, it should just pop over here. And I, shit, I told it interlace. So I'm freaking, that's why you say use. Because my dumbass hit interlaced. So let's boot it back. It'll be back on the main monitor. Hashtag Amiga life. And then I got to uninstall that crap. Grab a mode and drag it to the trash. Which is the skull. I don't need 10, 1280 by 1024 or these goofy Euro resolutions and that. So 60, 59, we can tick that up a little bit. No, don't save it yet. This one's 49, 800 by 600, so I gotta crank that up. All right, and this one is at 60 Hertz. That's fine, so now we'll save them. Reboot again, so you're already looking beautiful non-RTG, but you get your speed and your chip RAM back when you do this. So now we're going to go CyberVision 800 by 600. We are not interlaced. I'll say use. And there we go. So that's our workbench. Now my palette's going to look a little weird. Oh, because I'm 256 color magic workbench. That's great. Or eight. I just want to see something. Yeah, it's the palette. So there you go. There. So magic workbench palettes are a little bit red drifted. Cool thing is, is if on RTG, number one, it takes forever to boot. You get your chip RAM back. So you get all your chip RAM back. I get two megs of chip RAM and 12 megs of fast. That does use a little bit of fast. Four megs, but the card itself uh, works fine. Oh, that is my P96. So that's that. And then when I reboot, because I didn't save it, I don't make any permanent changes to my machine. I can then remove the CyberVision 64 board from this machine and uh, remove the Picasso 96 setting and even uninstall Picasso 96 entirely because I don't have a card in this machine. And I didn't have a need for it with the Amber system. So that's the quick fix of the uh, CyberVision 64 3D. Crusty connector, fiberglass pender, and then uh, 3000, and th th there, there you go. So I don't see any jumpers for Zorro 2 or Zorro 3. So I'm going to put this in this anti-static bag, and then next time you see this, way, you're probably going to see this on Kevin's channel way before this video ever even comes out. Why is that, Chris? Because I film at least three months in advance, and what you see now probably already happened in his world. 
But that's it. Thanks for watching this useless video, and I hope you learned something. I have Chris keep the Amiga dream alive. Please consider joining the Patreon. Yo, it's Big Snoop D.O. Double Gears. When people ask me, do I really know Dr. Chris? To which I say, hell yeah, I know him. So thanks for checking this out. And as Dr. Chris says, thanks for watching, and we hope you learned something. Wow, that was great. Please consider helping Dr. Chris. Dr. Chris, he's the best there ever was. I can tell you that personally, besides me, of course. Uh, what do you know from funny, you bastard?